This is the law of God. It doesn't mean if you give $100 that you're going to get back $1,000. It doesn't mean that. You get back generously from the Lord, but in the way he desires to give it to you. Now, it might be in wisdom and knowledge, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. But as you abound in everything, faith and speech and knowledge and all diligence and in your love for us, see that you abound in this grace also. One thing that is troubling is when we see a person that doesn't excel in the grace of giving. Anyone that doesn't excel in the grace of giving usually falls away. And we see that because of the fact that a lot of the churches are taking advantage of the people. But once again, that does not neglect or negate your responsibility to God. If you're not getting fed at that church, then you have to go where you're getting fed because God also says that we're supposed to sow into good ground. Now it's written in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, excuse me, chapter 8, verses 10. And in this I give advice. It is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring, which we're talking about to give, but now you also must complete the doing of it. That as there was a readiness to the desire, which was the willingness to give. So there also may be a contemplation out of what you have. For if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has and not according to what one doesn't have. Now understand this. There are some ministries that try to encourage you to make a fake promise that you're going to give $5,000 or $10,000. I see it all the time when they be having these telethons and all that. They want you to the, uh, pledge these un, ungodly numbers. But by, yet the Bible says, according to what one has, not according to what one doesn't have. Okay? There are also those who ask you to send a contribution and put it on your credit card. Mm -hmm. Yet you don't have the money. So you go into debt. Now, the New Testament tells us not according to what we don't have. Now, another method that a lot of ministers and ministry use is to hold you up in offerings and alms, meaning that they have even, have you waited before the people? You've seen that. They have found that people give more this way. God forbid that, 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 that you know, the, this is a, hallelujah, thank you. This is a grievous generation. They have devised schemes and ways to make you give when you should give because God commands you to give. Hallelujah. Now the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12, for if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has and not what according to what one doesn't have. But please bear in mind this is referring to offerings, not tithes. You tithe on everything, as the scriptures have already established. Your tithes come off the top. Then what is left goes for your living and so on. Now God is to receive his 10%. He simply gives you an income of a certain amount, 10% of which is his. Now the remaining 99, 90% uh, excuse me, is yours. However, remember, according to what you have, always try to give at least a little extra for an offering and don't forget to give alms, meaning don't forget to give to the poor. Because the Bible says that we're supposed to excel in giving. As it's written in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you give, it will be measured back to you. And in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6, 16 and 17, it says that for even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. 
giving results in fruit that may abound to your account. Now, do you want to lay up rewards in heaven? I know I do. In Luke chapter 8, we read of women that were helping meet the needs of Jesus. These women were helping to support them, meaning that they were helping to support Christ and his disciples out of their own means. And the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 17, that every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. And then in 2 Kings chapter 12, verse 4, we read, but, the gave, but he that gave money to the workmen, and they required, excuse me, they repaired the house of the Lord with it. Hallelujah. Now the Lord will lay up on your heart what to give. Now when it comes time to give an offering, not a tithe, a tithing is a command. Ask God what he wants you to give. God should put an amount in your mind. Then all of a sudden, some other amounts may also come into your mind, lower amounts. For instance, we may be visiting a, a, a church and the Lord might say, give $100 to this church. Then all of a sudden, a voice says, no, only give $10, because you need the other 90. Now, in almost every case, the first figure, the highest one, is of the Lord. The confusion that sets in afterwards, you can expect, is from the devil. So what do you do? Do you give grudgingly or cheerfully? Excel in the grace of giving. And just before we take another uh, station identification break for a commercial, let's look again at Matthew three, uh, Malachi chapter three, verse eight. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? in tithes and offering. Now in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 26, it says, he covets greedily all day long. Which this is the opposite of giving, is covetously greedy all day long. But the righteous gives and doesn't spare. Amen. Now a young man asked Jesus in Matthew chapter 19, verses 20 to 22, all these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go. Sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Now you see how riches can be a stumbling block? This perhaps is the one place in the scriptures where Christ says to do something before you follow him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will a man rob God? Now in other places, Jesus emphasized, let the dead bury the dead, or you come preach the gospel and drop everything else now. Leave your tax money, Matthew, drop everything right now. Leave your fish and father, Peter, leave the boats and nets, and come follow me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 